The information presented is for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed are not necessarily the opinions of any Daikin company. This information should not be confused for accounting, legal, medical, or other professional advice. Please seek advice from a qualified professional for any specific questions. It's actually a very safe refrigerant. Daikin wants to be involved in the community. Making another touch point to build my brand. So the first question we ask everyone is, Welcome to the Accelerated HVAC Success Program. My name is Ben Middleton. I'm the National Sales Training Manager for the Goodman, Amana, and Daikin Brands. Today we're here at Daikin Park and I have Roberto Herrera. He is the Senior Product Manager for mm -hmm. Split Unitary Systems. Roberto, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, Roberto, there has been a lot of talk about heat pumps uh, as of late. Um, you know, there's been the heat pump challenge has been in the news. We've heard a lot about electrification. There's just all kinds of buzz about heat pumps. Some contractors remember the heat pumps of the 1980s when that was a big deal. Uh, tell me, what what's all the buzz? What's all the news going on with heat pumps? Yeah, well, Ben, um, you know, like from, I would say the last five years, heat pump adoption has been significantly like growing crazy, mm. right? Uh, we are... We are, ex I would say we are witnessing like a fundamental transformation of our industry because we never seen that before. Like for decades, heat pumps were more considered like, oh, okay, they can perform well in just milder climates. And the perception was that they couldn't perform in extreme climates. That was until probably the last five years where we see all this explosion probably driven by uh, electrification, decarbonization trends, all the all the money that has been poured on massive key pump adoption, right? And we also have played a very big role in promoting this massive key pump adoption because we have been like providing advanced solutions like inverter driven heat mm -hmm. pumps. And we really like, we, I think we got it when we did the Daikin platform. Mm. Uh, by uh, launching the Daikin platform, we wanted to make sure that we break all those barriers for heat pumps, especially like from contractors or maybe um, uh, builders and even some people in the industry that they didn't believe that maybe the technology for heat pumps was there to provide very good uh, performance at extreme conditions. So we launched the feed platform. Uh, we were competing not against just the bulky Cooper style traditional equipment, but we created this side discharge inverter systems, right? where uh, we were trying to reach with uh, sustainable solutions to more customers, to more climates, right? That was the idea, uh, but we had a challenge. And the challenge was that we needed the feed platform to perform in extreme conditions. Mm. So we thought, why not to create a product that can perform at extreme weather, right? extreme climates, a product that can work in very cold winters, very hot, hot, hot summers, right? And that's how we came out with the Daikin Aurora, uh, the Daikin Aurora system. That's why I'm here to introduce this yes. system, right? It's an all climate side discharge in better heat pump. And it really like fits very well our mission, which is perfecting the air we share. Um, not just a tagline, it's just our commitment to reach to more places, more people, more homes in North America. And I think with the Daikin Aurora, being able to provide this technology in like extreme weathers, we are taking farther this commitment. Well, before we get into the Aurora story, just to go, going back to heat pumps in general. So you obviously, you take a look at all of the market trends and you're paying attention to all that stuff. What percentage of the market was heat pumps, say back, you know, a couple of years ago versus, you know, how many, how, what percentage of the market is heat pump today? Just to give contractors an idea, you say that there's been explosive growth. Oh. What does that mean? It's like, uh, I'm just going to tell you, like today, it's almost 50-50. Hmm? And in some places, 50-50. No, it, really? Yeah. And in some places, uh, just for us, for example, our mix, uh, when I came to work with Daikin, that was maybe six, seven years ago, mm -hmm. uh, the mix for the Daikin feed was maybe 80% AC and mm -hmm. just 20% heat pump. And now it's like 70, 80% heat pump and only 20% AC. So it has changed. Like the trend, it goes into heat pump. That is a pumps. dramatic, dramatic shift. Yeah, big shift. 
And so if a contractor today is in a market and they are only selling, you know, the traditional AC system, they could be potentially losing out on a lot of dollars. Oh, yeah. I mean, with all these incentives from the government, from the state level, utilities, right? Mm. Trying to promote more um, Energy Star products or trying to promote um, the CE specification to be able to reach on those eligibility for IR 25 C tax credits. If you don't have, if you're not installing heat pumps, you are missing all that opportunity. So a contractor may be, I, I, a lot of contractors I talk to, they, they have this question all the time. Why in the world would a utility company want somebody to go to a heat pump? What is the, how, what, what is the benefit to a, a utility company? Why are they paying such big incentives? So they are doing that because heat pumps are more efficient, mm. way more efficient than uh, AC, way more efficient than just traditional uh, systems with AC and gas furnace. Uh, heat pumps are three to four or five times more efficient than a gas furnace, right? Uh, that's one. And the other thing is that they also are promoting inverter technology because inverter technology is highly efficient. Mm. It saves energy. Uh, so for them, it's important reducing the peak load into the grid, that's very important, right? So that's why they are so invested into heat pump and inverter driven technology. Yeah, I think that's really a big thing for everybody to think about the utility companies. It is managing those peak loads. Utility companies all the time are trying to figure out how can I reduce that energy demand because it's really expensive to build a new power it plant. It is. It's really expensive to run brand new transmission lines. And so it's much, more efficient for them to incentivize a homeowner to reduce their energy consumption <laughs> than it is to build a brand new power plant or That's to right. build new uh, substation or whatever they need to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, 100%. So FIT, obviously side discharge, was a, a great innovation that Daikin brought into the market, bringing a true inverter heat pump experience to consumers uh, and Daikin, there was this uh, heat pump challenge that was thrown out, right? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And I think Daikin actually thought about the heat pump challenge differently than a lot of other manufacturers did. And, and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so, and I'm gonna bring a little bit the, the product, right? The, yeah. the Daikin Aurora. If you want to really understand where the Daikin Aurora is coming from, what is the technology behind the Daikin Aurora? you need to think on, okay, what was the, what was the challenge yeah. that bring that back, right? And it was the Department of Energy Coal Climate Heat Pump Challenge. Mm -hmm. That challenge is nothing else than um, the development of heat pumps, being able to operate at very cold conditions, like low ambient conditions, right? Like electrical systems that are able to maybe perform at five degrees 100% of the capacity, being able to keep operating at minus 15. Mm. None or minimal use of any electric backup heat. That is what the DOE challenge is. And we accept that challenge. Yeah. And we wanted to take it further. Mm -hmm. We worked for 18 months. We were prototyping, testing, designing the equipment in places like Minnesota, um, Wisconsin, Quebec, very cold places, right? And we took all that technology and we put it back into our dike in Aurora. And now we know that uh, we learned a lot from that uh, challenge. We were able to put together a prototype that was performing really well at very low conditions, low ambient conditions. And the dike in Aurora is enjoying that technology now. So as, in terms of product positioning, and this is what I talk about, a lot of our competitors took that challenge different. They wanted kind of the uh, ability to say, yes, we met the heat pump challenge, but the, a lot of times they did it on their very top end, highest cost, most efficient system that they have out there, right? Mm -hmm. And Daikin took a little bit of a different approach because they said, really, if you're gonna take this heat pump challenge, let's make a product that is for the masses. Let's make a, a mid-tier solution yeah. that can meet all of these challenges and so now, in essence, when you take a look at portfolios, Daikin has a fully inverter communicating system in the mid-tier spot, competing with many of the competitors' two-stage systems that are out there. That's right. And so a contractor that goes to a homeowner, 
and is saying, hey, I've got this solution, they have a huge advantage over a competitor that may be offering a, a different manufacturer's solution that is only two stage. So I can give you a true inverter heat pump experience at a mid-tier price, mm -hmm. which uh, really differentiates our contractors from everybody else. Yeah, that's, what it, that's what the feed platform it is, right? We are competing, not competing, we're just getting to the same space of, like you mentioned, a two stage, but with an inverter and solution with all the benefits that you get with that, better dehumidification, better comfort, more savings, right? And I think it was great, but we needed that extreme model that will took us to places where we were not getting before, like very yeah. extreme places, right? So tell me kind of the uh, story behind the naming of Aurora. Oh. How, how, did, how does this uh, system get that name? That's a very good question. Um, I promise you that during the time where we were like working on the project, the word extreme came out many times, like okay. thousands of times every day. So we were like, okay, okay, we got it. So let's build up about around extreme. And then we were thinking, okay, let's think about the earth. What is extreme in the earth? The poles, right? The okay. magnetic poles. Yeah. And what is happening in the magnetic poles? This phenomenon called Aurora. So it came very quickly. I think it fits because the purpose of this product is that the, he really operates very well at every side of the spectrum. Hmm. So that's why we choose the Aurora name. You know, and as we go on this tour around North America this year with Accelerated HVAC Success, mm -hmm. we're going to be going to some extreme climates as well. Oh. You know, today we're at Dyken Park, and it actually is a beautiful day here at Dyken Park. It is. <laughs> and let me but, tell you, this is an amazing day for me because, honestly, guys, um, it's very exciting. Probably one of the most exciting days in my career, coming here and watch this I mean, the scene is amazing. There's no better place to talk about pride, performance, efficiency than the home of the Astros at Daikin Park. Well, and actually we have a Daikin inverter system <laughs> that uh, is uh, keeping us comfortable. As I we're feel it. I feel <laughs> it. <laughs> but uh, so, you know, you think about that. Um, we're going to be talking about Fit and the Aurora product and just all of the other things Daikin's doing as we go to these extreme uh, different climates that uh, we're going to be in. Um, I think in the past there's been hesitancy, right? Uh, to go with a, a heat pump system or a side discharge system in areas like Phoenix, Arizona, where you can get over 115 degrees uh, in the peak of, peak of summer. Or like you said, Minnesota, Wisconsin, where I'm from, mm -hmm. uh, where you know sometimes you can get a real temperature of minus 30, minus 40 degrees uh, in, in some of those areas. And uh, that's where Fahrenheit and Celsius meet. And so that's kind of a, <laughs> doesn't matter. It's just cold. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, to see, you know, how these systems perform and what they're able to do, uh, it, it, it's, it's exciting. What, uh, what kind of thoughts do you have for contractors that are maybe haven't tried putting an Aurora system in yet. What would, you, what would your suggestions or advice be to them? Yeah, so, well, first of all, I would tell them to do it, okay? Um, especially those contractors that are already working with embedded systems. Mm. I mean, um, with the Aurora, you, the Aurora is part of the Fit series. Therefore, it shares a lot of common things, like it has the same refrigerant, R32. This is the refrigerant that we use in this new regulation, the 2025 regulation, mm. right? This refrigerant allow us to have more efficiency, more capacity in our system, reduce refrigerant charge, right? But also as part of the Daikin platform, uh, the Aurora uh, shares the same inverter driven compressor technology, uh, features like stream dehumidification, features like quiet levels of sound. Right? So you have all those features that we enjoy today with the Daikin platform but also because it's, it's part of a, like, the specification, it's part of the DOE challenge uh, at very low conditions, very low ambient conditions, like in, in your home uh, town, uh, it performs extremely well. At five degrees, 100% capacity. You can go down to minus 10 degrees, perfectly operating. So it's extremely well. And it has features like, for example, if you need it, uh, we are offering a, it's a fuel install three-stage heater kit, mm. if you need it. But it's three stages, which means that 
it goes up to 15 kilowatts, but have stages in 5 kilowatts, 10 kilowatts, 15. So if the system needed, we we'll just call like maybe one stage, maybe the second stage. That saves a lot of money, right? But only if you need it. You may not need it, depending where you are, right? Um, also, you have features like, for example, drain pan. Um, drain pan, we call it hot gas drain pan technology. And what it is is that we take hot gas from the, uh, from the coil of a unit and we make it run that gas around around the drain pan here, the, the drain pan of the unit, sorry. Uh, so with that, what we get is that we avoid this damage because of ice buildup yes. or issues that can happen because at high, at low ambient temperatures, right? So that's another feature that we are bringing with, uh, with this uh, Daikin Aurora. And actually we're using that feature in the VRV models currently today. So it's a very, very cutting edge feature. And uh, another feature that to me, it's, it is very important, and uh, I think for the contractors will be important too, is that is demand response capable? And I don't know for many people, maybe now demand response is like, I don't care. But you have to care because in 2026, uh, it will be mandatory, HRI 1380, that's demand response. And it will be mandatory for CEE and therefore IRA 25C tax credits. So I'm strongly recommended to start getting into how to install the Daikin Aurora because they're gonna get this um, possibility to, in their estimations, reduce this $2,000 because the homeowner will be able to uh, get that uh, if, he, if he calls for uh, that tax credit. And also the technology, right? They, it will, they will take them f closer to those places where before they couldn't just take a feed platform and install it. Now they're able to do it. Well, Roberto, thank you so much for coming here. You know, for all the contractors that uh, are listening to this, you know, thinking about the Aurora and the extreme performance mm. uh, that it provides at an affordable price for the homeowner, I think it is a real differentiator for contractors as we go into this uh, cooling season and a great option for contractors to be exploring with their homeowners that are out there. Uh, thank you so much. And for all of you that are out there, if you liked this episode, please go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, and also make sure that you're following us so that you can be informed of all of the upcoming episodes that we have. Until next time. It's actually a very safe refrigerant. Daikin wants to be involved in the community. Making another touch point to build my brand. So the first question we ask everyone is, 